This is a podcast from the Orthocycle Foundation, a registered charity in the UK. In this podcast, we're going to talk about the application of splintage for lower limb fractures. When a bone fractures, the bone ends overlap. This is because of the pull of the muscles. There's bleeding into the potential space around the fracture, and there could be pain with movement. There's also potential for more soft tissue damage. When we put on traction, we pull the bones out to length. This could be direct using the bone itself, or indirect using the soft tissues as a proxy. We put on traction in order to stabilise long bones prior to the surgery. It can also be used for first aid or for transport. It gives good pain relief and can prevent further soft tissue trauma and bleeding. It's helpful in, uh, prior to surgery because it keeps the muscles out to length. In this series we're going to look at three different types of traction. The Thomas splint was invented by Hero and Thomas in the late 19th century. It decreased mortality in World War I from femoral fractures from 80% down to 15%. It can be applied for the circulation part of the CABC. Don't forget to use analgesia and check the neurovascular status before you start. Don't forget to use personal protective equipment at all times. For uh, the purposes of this demonstration, we're going to assume that Kareem uh, has got a left femoral fracture and his ATLS has been done, so his airway, breathing, and circulation are all fine. Although, of course, you know, if you've got femoral fracture, you can lose 1.5 inches of blood, so that might come into the circulation element anyway. Um, what we need to do first of all is make sure that he's comfortable and normally I give a femoral nerve block in order to make sure that he's not in too much pain or hopefully not in any pain at all while we put on the Thomas splint. Uh, and then we're going to make sure that we've got all the right equipment. So this is a Thomas splint, right? And the way that this works is that this part of it is going to push on the ischial tuberosity and then the other end of it is going to be attached to his ankle and we're going to literally pull them further apart and the way that that works is by stretching the muscles over the top of the bone the bone will come out to length and by stretching the muscles that will tamponade the bleeding and hopefully it will stop there from being too much movement which will help him a lot with pain so the reasons that we're applying it are one for uh, alignment two for pain relief uh, three uh, for uh, control of any bleeding as well. Now, um, we need to make sure that we've got all the right equipment. So we want this to be appropriate for the uh, left-hand side. So I'm going to press the button on here and lengthen it here. And that is now uh, appropriate for his left-hand side. We want to make sure we can measure it on his other leg, just to make sure that it's going to be long enough. I'd quite like this to be a little bit longer. And it's telescopic, so that's going to be long enough for us. Okay. The other equipment that we need to need is some uh, tuber grip which we're going to use to make some support. We've got some slings uh, which are purpose made to again support the limb. We've got a tense plus pack and these come in adult and pediatric sizes and essentially this is going to apply the skin traction and we're going to use this to pull on the leg and pull it towards the end of the frame. And we've also got some wool and we probably need some crepe as well just for comfort. Okay so first thing that we're going to do is make sure that he's neurovascularly intact before he starts. So I'm going to take off his shoe, sock, you do need to help us, right, and then check that he's got pulses he has, right? And in order to uh, get the reduction, we're going to get someone to put inline traction on the patient's leg. And if you can tilt the head slightly downwards, what that means is that the body's pa that the patient's body is going to give you counter traction because it's sliding the other way, so that you can hold onto the leg and pull backwards, and you're not just going to pull the whole body uh, up towards uh, the way you where you're pulling from. So. Um, what we're going to do uh, first of all is we're going to wrap a little bit of wool around the um, bar that's going to go over the ischial tuberosity. The ischial tuberosity is that bit of your bottom that you sit on. So we're just going to put this on for comfort. Length of uh, this 
Tube's great. I'm going to put the tube bit onto Tom's splint. We want it to be longer than the size of the patient's leg um, because if that's on the initial tuberosity, if we want to get some traction, we need a little bit of room at the bottom. So we finish with that now. So rotate the paper back and Is it's essentially some reinforced foam and it's got um, some sticky material on the side that is going to adhere to the patient's skin and that's going to allow us to get the traction. Now what I'd like you to do in order to help me is just apply traction to the leg and um, I'm just going to make a slit in your trousers so that we can... I'm not going to go all the way to the top, don't worry. No? Right, you don't move, don't move, that's good. And he's got some hair on his legs. Ideally, we want to shave his legs as well. We're not going to do that, don't we? <laughs> okay, so if you can put it in my traction on the leg. And I'm just going to tie a reef knot on the end of here. I'm going to apply this. I want to leave a little bit of space between the end of uh, the uh, traction and the heel so that we can keep an eye on the heel. Yeah, you can hold it, yeah. You can see everything there. And I'm going to apply this to the leg. And you don't really want to go higher than the fracture because then you're pulling the whole leg and it sort of counters what you're trying to achieve. So, right. and then I'm going to put one on this side as well. Now, just, he's going to take off his hairs when it comes off. Oh. So, we will have waxed legs. Oh, and then, we should have a roll here. What we want to do is to basically um, put some pressure on this so it adheres to the skin. And then come off. I'm going to start off above his medial uh, malleolus. I'm going to wrap it around the leg. I'm going to leave the knee out. And again, I wouldn't go for, uh, more proximal than where the fracture was. Now, if I've given him a femoral block, then he won't be any pain at all. And we can now apply the tongue splint. I'm going to put these supports in. Now, if you need to elevate the leg up, you can slide this in, and this is going to sit. You slide it up as far as you can go. Obviously, in a man, you need to be careful uh, to avoid trapping the genitals. Can you feel that touching your initial tumor? Yeah. Okay. 
And then if you turn them in motion, you do just rest the leg on there now. And at this distal end, I'm going to demonstrate applying traction to the cords at the end of the Thomas splint using a traditional windlass method and a pulley method. Using the traditional windlass method, you need to take hold of the cords and the inner cord goes underneath the Thomas splint and the outer cord, the most lateral, is going to go over the top of the splint, pull them back together in the middle and tie a little knot. The cords then go over the end of the splint form a loop and then tie a knot again. This will give you a little bit of traction. We're going to get hold of some lollipop sticks. You often need three and these need to be tied together so that they don't splinter while they're being used as a windlass. I'm using some tape here just to bind them all together. And then the lollipop stick is going to be applied to the straight part of the cord and then wound round and round. And because they're winding around, they're going to generate some tension uh, in the cord and that's going to pull on the foot, pulling the foot towards the foot end of the splint and it's possible to perceive that there is now traction on that cord and it's pulling the foot more distally. This just needs to be locked off. And this kind of, it's down to traction and it's not going to come undone. We're now going to use the pulley method. So make a hoop and pass through the cord, making a little lasso. The ends are then going to go over the end of the ton splint and then passed through the eye of the little lasso. We can then pull on this and this is going to generate traction and eventually you can finish this off with a clove hitch to secure your traction. And that's it, we're all done. If you've enjoyed this video um, and you would like to donate to the Author Cycle Foundation, you can do so via our website.